Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This will be our first attempt on creating an event-driven algorithm for trading, and I wanna use this to trade the weekly initial claims release. So if you go to investing.com and you go to economic calendar, this site provides all the economic events happening around the world, but we could use filters to filter out the ones we want. So here I'm gonna clear all. I'm gonna select the United States only. And I want events with the highest importance. So I'm gonna click the three stars. I'm gonna hit apply. So here we have a couple for today. Typically the ones with three stars are of high importance so they can move the markets significantly. So that's what I want to trade. But I wanna focus on the initial jobless claims that happen every Thursday at 8.30 Eastern time. So here we get a brief summary on this economic event. So a higher than expected rating should be taken as a negative or bearish signal for the USD, while the lower and expected reading should be taken as a positive or bullish signal for the USD. So for this event, I want to trade the Spiders SPY ETF. All right, so for the signal, I'm gonna short the SPY if the actual number is above the forecasted number, and I'm gonna buy if the actual number is less than the forecasted number. The only problem I have is that the actual releases are in PDF format, I'm not able to get an RSS feed for this news release, but if you find a way other than a PDF, please let me know so that I can update the script. So luckily for us, this news release is always the same and in the same format, and the number I'm looking for will be in the first paragraph of this PDF. So I'll have to call in this PDF in R and extract this number from the first paragraph. So if we take a look at the link, we see that for this news release, which happened April 15th, 2021, it'll be easy for us to extract and call this PDF by date, and if you go up one level, so I'm gonna delete this part, it'll take us to the actual archive. So here we have all the PDFs for the past events. So for the algorithm, I'll just pass in this directory and keep refreshing this page until we get a new hyperlink. All right, so let's go to our script to see how this all works. All right guys, so here are the packages we're going to require. I'm gonna use interactive brokers to send my orders but I'm also going to use the TD Ameritrade API to get the bid and the ask. So for the economic calendar, you use investing.com and to actually get the PDF of the economic news release, we're gonna use the second link. All right, so you're gonna to have to store your API key in here and then run these two lines to store your API key in this new environment called pass. I'm gonna source a Python script I have so that I can make requests to get the latest quote in real time. But in the next iteration of the script, I'll go ahead and make everything interactive brokers, but you are going to need access to their real time data so that we can get the bid and the ask in real time. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and run these two lines. As I mentioned, I'm gonna use interactive brokers to open up new positions. So here I have created a function to place an order and all we need to pass in are the ticker, the number of shares and the action, whether we wanna buy or sell. So if we open up this function, I'm gonna establish a connection with interactive brokers. I'm gonna pass in my ticker and create a new security variable. I'm gonna pass in the number of shares, the action, whether I wanna buy or sell. I'm gonna generate a new order ID for this order. And here's where I'll be calling in the TD API so that I can get the latest quote to extract the bid and the ask. And I'm gonna use a limit order since this is pre-market. And I'm gonna go ahead and place an order at the midpoint price. And the very last line will actually place the order. So that's it, very simple. I haven't generated a function to actually close the position because I'm still in the works of how I want to approach this. But for now, I just wanna make sure that this is working properly. One thing I forgot to mention was that I have this set to transmit equal to false. This will actually send the order to interactive brokers, but the order actually won't go through because it won't be a live order. All right, let's go to the next function. So I actually installed a new version of Arvest, which has this function called the request get deprecated so I went ahead and just pasted it in there in case you actually install the newest version of Arvest as well. So I'll go ahead and run these two functions. So if you've been watching my videos for some time this function may look familiar. I'll just be passing in the release date time for the economic event which would be found here in line 112. So the most recent date time was 4 15 2021 at 5 30 local time and this will actually set the script to sleep until that time is reached. And then we would start making requests to the site to see if they updated their directory with the newest PDF of this news release. So I'll go ahead and run that function. So I won't go over this block because I will be removing it in the next release, but this function will just get the latest quote so that I can extract the bid and the ask from the TD API. So I'll go ahead and run that. 
Okay, so for any of the lines you see red circles, that means that you have to manually set these, which will be the estimate or the forecast of the initial weekly claims. So for this week, the forecast was 700,000. So I'll go ahead and run that. So since these are every Thursday, I'm just gonna create a sequence of dates starting from today, and I'm gonna add seven days to get a full week, and I'm gonna extract the very first iteration we get for Thursday. So if we run this, so I'm gonna pass in the first iteration and I'm gonna set it to this format so that we can create the extension of the file name for this PDF. All right, here you will have to manually set the release date time of the initial weekly claims according to your time zone, but I'll see if there's a way to actually change this in the next iteration so you don't have to manually set this yourself. So I'll go ahead and run that line. All right, so we will now take a look at the actual algorithm. So everything will be held in this function called weekly claims algo. So the first thing I wanna test is if the news release is actually in the directory of this website. So I'll pass in the URL. I'm gonna read HTML. I'm gonna convert that to text and split by using the new line separator. So if we run that, and if we take a look at what that looks like, so we have the directory and all the file names. So the next thing I wanna test is if this new PDF is in the directory. If not, I'm gonna set the system to sleep for five seconds and then rerun this. All right, so if the PDF is posted, then it will run this next block. Otherwise, it will print out no data yet. I'll set the system to sleep and then call this function again. So it will keep looping until we see the PDF is in this directory. But if we take a look at what's inside this block, I'm going to use PDF text to read in the PDF into R. I'm going to split the PDF into chunks. So I'll go ahead and run this next block. As I mentioned, these news releases are in the same format. So I want to focus in the first paragraph where it begins with in the week ending and then it'll, it'll have the date. But I want to locate the string where it matches this pattern and this will bring us to the location. And then I'll subset my text to this location. So if we run the next line and if we take a look at that variable, here we have the actual sentence of where it says in the week ending of April 10th, and then we have our number here. So now that we have this string, I'm gonna try and focus on extracting this 576. I'm gonna replace all the commas with empty spaces so that R can recognize actual numbers. I'm gonna split the string again, and I just wanna focus on where it reads adjusted initial claims was, so I'll go ahead and run that. So if we take a look at that variable again, here we see the actual number 576. And I have split this so that the second item of my list will have our number we're looking for. So I'm going to save that into temp. Now that we have this broken down, I'm going to extract all the numbers from that string. And I'm going to convert it into a numeric variable and extract the very first element. So if we take a look at temp, we now get to the number we're looking for. So the process I just went over takes about two to three seconds to run and we will now move to actually making a decision. So to make a decision, if the number is greater than the estimate, then we have a bearish signal and our action will be sell. Otherwise, if the number is less than the estimate, then it will be bullish and our action will be to buy. And then finally, I'm just gonna place an order for SPY. I'm gonna buy or sell one share. So here's where you would change the number of shares you wanna buy or sell or the ticker itself. After I place an order, I'm gonna print out order sent. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this function. I'm gonna go ahead and run it. To get the algorithm to start, I'm gonna set the system to sleep until we reach our release date time. And then I'll be calling in our weekly claims algo function. So if we run that, it'll look something like this. but we would actually need to call these two functions together and then hit run. So that's the end of the script, guys. In the next iteration, I'll have something working with Interactive Broker so that you see the actual trade going through. But for now, you can just work with the script, which I will post on my GitHub, and I will post a link in the description below. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.